All right, we got chapter 26. I steal the king's plunder. Okay. Well, when they was all gone, the king, he asked Mary Jane how they was off for spare rooms. And she said she had one spare room, which would do for Uncle William. And she'd give her own room to Uncle Harvey, which was a little bigger. And she would turn into the room with her sisters and sleep on a cot. And up Garrett was a little cubby with a pallet in it. The king said the cubby would do for his valley, meaning me. <laughs> so Mary Jane took us up and she showed them the rooms, which was plain but nice. She said she'd have her frocks and a lot of other traps took out of her room if they was in Uncle Harvey's way, but he said they weren't. The frocks was hung along the walls and before them was a curtain made out of calico that hung down to the floor. There was an old hair trunk in one corner and a guitar box in another, all sorts of little knickknacks and gym cracks around like girls risking up a room with. The king said it was all the more homely and more pleasanter for these fixings and so don't disturb them. The duke's room was pretty small but plenty good enough and so was my cubby. The night they had a big supper and all them men and women was there and I stood behind the king in the duke's chair and waited on them and the uh, slaves waited on the rest. Mary Jane, she sat at the head of the table with Susan alongside of her and said how bad the biscuits was and how mean the preserves was and how ornery and tough the fried chicken was, the fried chickens was and all that kind of rot, the way women always do for, for to force out compliments and the people all know that everything was tip top and said so, said, how do you get business to brown so nice? And where for the land's sake did you get these amazing pickles and all that kind of humbug talky talky talk just the way people always do their supper you know and when it was all done me and the hair lip had supper in the kitchen off of the leavings whilst the others was helping the, the servants clean up the things the hair lip she got to pumping me about england and blessed if i didn't think the ice was getting mighty thin sometimes she said did you ever see the king who William Fourth? Well, I bet I have. He goes to our church. I know he was dead years ago, but I never let on. So, when I says he goes to our church, she says, "What? Regular? Yes, regular. His pews right over opposite on, on the other side of the pulpit. I thought he lived in London. Well, he does. Where would, would he live? I thought he lived in Sheffield. I see. I was up. I was up a stump. I had to let on to get. I had to let on to get choked with the chicken bone, so as to get time to think how to get down again. Then I says, I mean." He goes to our church regular when he's in Sheffield. That's only in the summertime when he comes there to take the sea bats. Why, how you talk? Sheffield ain't on the sea. Well, who said it was? Why, you did. I didn't, another. You did. I didn't. You did. I never said nothing of the kind. Well, what did you say then? He said he comes to take the sea bats. That's what I said. Well, then how's he going to take the sea bats if it ain't on the sea? Looky here. I said, did you ever see any Congress water? Yes. Well, did you have to go to Congress to get it? Why, no. Well, neither does William Fourth have to go to the sea to get sea bath. How does he get it then? Gets it the way people down there here gets Congress water in barrels. They're in the palace at Sheffield. They've got furnaces and he wants his water hot. They can't um, bail that amount of water away off there at the sea. They haven't got no conveniences for it. Is it bile? They can't bile that amount of water, B-I-L-E. They can't bile that amount of water away off there at the sea. They haven't got no conveniences for it. Oh, I see now. You mind to say that in the first place and save time. When she said that, I see I was out of the woods again, so I was comfortable and glad. Next, she says, do you go to church too? Yes, regular. Where do you sit? Why, in, the, in our pew. Whose pew? Why, well, I don't know. Your Uncle Harvey's. His and a, what does he want with the pew? Wants it to sit in. What do you reckon he wanted it with? Why, I thought he'd be in the pulpit. Rahim, I forgot he was a preacher. I see I was up a stump again, so I played another chicken bone and got another think. Then I says, blame it. Do you suppose there ain't but one preacher to a church? Why, what do they want with more? What, to preach before a king? I never did see such a girl as you. They don't have no less than 17. 17, my land, why? I wouldn't set on such a string as that. Not if I never got the glory. It must take them a week. Shucks, they don't all, all of them preach the same day. Only one, one of them. So this is the one with the hair lip. I think she has like a cut here. But she's the youngest one, I think, and she's very young. She probably listened to what the, the doctor was saying. She's questioning them. Well, then what does the rest of them do? Oh, nothing much. Lola around past the plate and one thing or another, but mainly they don't do nothing. Well, then what are they for? Why, they're for style. Don't you know nothing? Well, I don't want to know no such foolishness as that. How are the servants treated in England? Do they treat them better and we treat our servants? No, a servant ain't nobody there. They treat them worse than dogs. Don't they give them holidays the way we do? Christ, Christmas and New Year's week and Fourth of July. Oh, just listen. A body could tell you ain't ever been to England by that. Why? Why, hair, why, Joanna, they never see a holiday from year's end to year's end. Never go to the circus, nor theater. No servant shows, nor nowhere. 
nor church, nor church, but you always went to church. Well, I was gone up again. I forgot I was the old man's servant. The next minute, I whirled in on a kind of an explanation how a valley was different from a common servant. I had to go to church whether he wanted to or not and sat with his family on account of it being, you know, it's being the law. But I didn't do it pretty good. And when I got down, I see she weren't satisfied. And she says, honest engine. Now, ain't you been telling me a lot of lies? Honest engine, says I. Injun? I-N-J-U-N? Honest engine, says I. None of it at all. None of it at all. Not a lie in it, says I. Lay your hand on this book and say it. I see it more nothing but a dictionary, so I lay my hand on it and said it. So then she looked a little better satisfied and says, Well then, I'll believe some of it, but I hope the gracious if I ever if I'll believe the rest. What is it you won't believe, Joe? says Mary Jane, stepping in with Susan behind her. It ain't right nor kind for you to talk so to him, and him a stranger and so far from his people. How would you like to be treated so? That's always your way, Mame. Always sailing in to help somebody before they're hurt. I ain't done nothing to him. He's told some stretchers, I reckon. I said I wouldn't swallow it all, and that's every bit and grain I did say. I reckon he can stand a little thing like that, can he? I don't care whether twas little or whether twas big. He's here in our house and a stranger, and it wasn't good of you to say it. If he was in his place, it would make you feel ashamed, so you wanted to say a thing to another person that would make them feel ashamed. Why, Mame, he said. <clears throat> Why, Mame, he said. It don't make no difference what he said. That ain't that ain't the thing. The thing is for you to treat him kind and not to be saying things to make him remember he ain't in his own country and amongst his own folks. I says to myself, this is a girl that I'm letting that old reptile robber of her money. And Susan, she waltzed in, and if you believe me, she did get, give hair lip hark from the tomb. And Susan, she waltzed in, and if you'll believe me, she did give hair lip hark from the tomb. Says I to myself, and this is another one that I'm letting him rob her of her money. And Mary Jane, she took another inning and went in sweet and lovely again, which was her way. But when she got done, there weren't hardly anything left of her poor, of poor hair lip. So she hollered, all right then, says the other girls. You just ask his pardon. So she hollered. Then Mary Jane, she took another inning and went in, went in sweetly and lovely again, which was her way. But when she got done, there weren't hardly anything left. There wasn't hardly anything left. Oh, oh, poor hair lip. There wasn't hardly anything left. Oh, poor hair lip. So she hollered. All right then, says the other girls. You just ask his pardon. So it doesn't, he doesn't describe a um, hair lip, just hollers. All right then, says the other girls. Well, they didn't holler either. I'm just hollering it. All right then, says the other girls. You just ask his pardon. She done it too, and she done it beautiful. She done it so beautiful, it was good to hear, and I wished I could tell her a thousand lies so she could do it again. <laughs> I said to myself, this is another one that I'm letting him rob her of her money, and when she got through, they all just laid our, uh, themselves out to make me feel at home and know I was amongst friends. I felt so ornery and low down and mean that I said to myself, my mind's made up. I'll hive that money for them or bust. So then I lit out for bed, I said, meaning some time or another. When I got by myself, I went to thinking the thing over. I said to myself, shall I go to that doctor private and blow on these frauds? No, that won't do. He might tell who told him. Then the king and the duke would make it warm for me. Shall I go private and tell Mary Jane? No, I doesn't do it. Her face would give them a hint. Sure, they've got the money and they'd slide right out and get away with it. If she, if, she, uh, if she was to fetch in help, I'd get mixed up in the business before it was done with, I judge. No, there ain't no good way but one. I got to steal that money somehow and I got to steal it some way that won't suspicion that I had done it. They got a good thing here and they ain't going to leave till they've played this family in this town for all their words. So I'll find a chance time enough. I'll steal it and hide it. And by and by, when I'm away down the river, I'll write a letter and tell Mary Jane where it's hid. But I better uh, hive it. I better hive it tonight if I can, because the doctor m maybe hasn't let up as much as he let lets on he has. He might scare them out of here yet. So, he, so thinks I. I'll go and search them rooms upstairs. The hall was dark, but I found the Duke's room and started to paw around it with my hands. But I recollected it wouldn't be much like the king to let anybody else take care of that money but his own self. So then I went to his room and began to paw around there, but I see I couldn't do nothing without a candle. And I doesn't light one, of course, so I judged I got to do the other thing, lay for them and eavesdrop. About that time, I hears their footsteps coming. It was going to skip under the bed. I reached for it, but it wasn't where I thought it would be. But I touched the curtain that hid Mary Jane's frock, so I jumped in behind that and snuggled in amongst the gowns and stood there perfectly still. They come in and shut the door, and the first thing the Duke done was to get down and look under the bed. Then I was glad I hadn't found the bed when I wanted it, and yet you know it's kind of natural to hide under the bed when you are up to anything private. It sits down then, and the king says, well, what is it? And 
cut it middle and short because it's better for us to be down there whooping up the morning than up here giving them a chance to talk us over. Oh, this is it, Capet. I ain't easy. I ain't comfortable. The doctor lays on his mind. The doctor lay on, lays on my mind. I wanted to know your plans. I've got a notion. I think it's a sound one. What is it, Duke? That we better glide out of out of this before three in the morning and clip it down the river with what we've got, especially seeing we got it so easy, given back to us, flung at our heads, as you may say, when of course we allowed to have we allowed to have to steal it back. I'm I'm for knocking off and lighting up. Like the Duke saying we should leave. That made me feel pretty bad about an hour or two ago. It would have been a little different, but now it made me feel bad and disappointed. The king rips out and says, What? And not sell out the rest of the property? March off like a passel of fools and leave eight or nine thousand dollars worth of property laying around just suffering to be scooped in and all good? Salable stuff too? The Duke, he grumbled, said the bag of gold was enough and he didn't want to go no deeper, didn't want to rob a lot of orphans of everything they had. Why, how you talk, says the king. We shan't rob them of nothing at all, but just this money. The people that buys the property <clears throat> is the sufferers because as soon as it's found out we didn't own it, which won't be long after we slid, the sale won't be valid and it'll all go back to the estate. These are your orphans, they'll get their house back again and that's enough for them. Though young and that they are young and spry and can easy earn a living. They ain't going to suffer. Why, well, just think, there's thousand and thousand that ain't this guy's like 60 years old too why well, just think there's thousands and thousands that ain't nigh so well off bless you they ain't got nothing to complain of while well, the king he talked him blind so at last he give in and said all right but said he believed it it was blamed foolishness to stay and that doctor hanging over them but the king says cuss the doctor what do we care you for him what do we care you for him and we got all the fools in town on our side ain't that a big enough majority in any town so they got ready to go downstairs again. The Duke says, I don't think we put that money in a good place. That cheered me up. I began to think I weren't going to get a hint of no kind of help me. The King says, why? Because Mary Jane will be in, Mary Jane will be in mourning from this out. And first you know, the, the servant that does up the rooms will get an order to box these duds up and put them away. And do you reckon a, a servant can run across money and not borrow some of it? Your head's leveled again, Duke, says the king, and he comes a fumbling under the curtain two or three foot from where I was. I stuck tight to the wall and kept mighty still, though quivery, and I wondered what them fellows would say to me if they catch me. And I tried to think what I'd better do if they did catch me, but the king got the bag before I could think more about a half a thought, and he never suspicioned I was around. They took and shoved the bag through a rip in the straw tick that was under the feather bed and cram crammed it in a foot or two amongst the straw and said it was all all right now, because a, a servant only makes up the feather bed and don't turn over the straw tick only about twice a year, so we're in no danger of getting stolen now. <laughs> but I know better. I had it out there before they was halfway downstairs. I groped along to my cubby and hid it there. I could get a chance to do better. I judged I better hide it outside of the house somewhere because if they missed it, they would give the house a good ransacking. I know that very well, then I turned in with, with my clothes all on, but I couldn't have gone to sleep if I'd have wanted to. I was in such a sweat to get through with the business. By and by, I heard the king and the duke come up, so I rolled off my pallet and lay with my chin at the top of the ladder, at the top of my ladder, and waited to see if anything was going to happen, but nothing did. So I held on till all the late sounds had quit and early ones had, hadn't begun yet, and then I slipped down the ladder. But I know better. I had it out I had it out of there before they was halfway down the stairs. I groped along up to my cubby and hid it there so I could get a chance to do better. I judged I better hide it outside of the house somewhere. Because if they missed it, they would give the house a good ransacking. I know that very well. And I turned in with my clothes all on. I judged I better hide it outside of the house. I know that very well. Then I turned in with my clothes all on. But I couldn't have gone to sleep if I'd have wanted to. I was in such a sweat to get through the business. By and by, I heard the king and duke come up. So I rolled off my pallet and lay with my chin at the top of the ladder. And waited to see if anything was going to happen, but nothing did. So I held on till all the late sounds had quit and the early ones hadn't begun yet. And then I slipped down the river. All right, that was the end of chapter 26.